Hello, my brothers and sisters. Just want to talk a little bit about three reasons why we struggle. There are many more, but we're just going to deal with three. And at the end, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my struggle. But the three reasons why we struggle is lack of obedience, lack of time with God, and a lack of faith. Okay? Um, when you're disobedient, this is how it looks. You're doing things that God, as you know, doesn't want you to do. Yes, this is natural and God grew it. and But you don't have no illness that you need to be dealing with some of these substance, okay, and things that you're doing. Yes, God turned, Jesus turned water into wine. They were having a celebration. Yes, God doesn't mind us celebrating. And it was for that occasion. But every weekend, you know, you, you live for it. You know, it's before God is what we're talking about. Things that you relying on and dependent on to see you through, you know, to bring you happiness, to bring you joy. You know, these are things that are getting you caught up in being disobedient. The people you hang around, you know, you know, God has told you that that is not where you're supposed to be. The people that you're supposed to be around. You know, and that's why it ends you up in the places that you end up in. You know, these are reasons why we are struggling and, and out here lost from our lack of obedience. Okay, God said in um, 1 Samuel, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. You know, back in the day, they would, um, if they were obedient, they would give God their best um, animal, a best, the best, the best they had. Just imagine something of yours that's a best, your diamond, your Rolex. You know, you would have to make that sacrifice, the best, you know, and they would send this up to God for forgiveness. But God said, it is better that you obey me. Listen, listen to me. He doesn't want us out here suffering and having to deal with the consequences of disobedience. Yes, God is a forgiving God and you possibly could still make it into heaven, but you may um, have to deal with the course of your disobedience just as David did. A lot of people like to use David. David, you know, they said um, it would never leave his house. Like, um, like his family would have to deal with what he did, you know, generational um, curse for disobedience will be on your family. And some of you are living out of these curses that your forefathers did to you by being disobedient. But do you know that you can break that curse by prayer, you know, turning your life around? Some of you throughout your family, um, babies at a wedlock, marriages that don't last, gay, lesbians in the family, whole family, mother, father in jail, the kids, their life is in jail, already, you know, on the system. You know, some of this is generational curses that you can break today by being obedient. Okay? God said things he he did, we're going to do better. He did a lot of miracles and, and delivered a lot, broke chains, you know, healed. And he says, you will do better. He left the Holy Spirit with us to do better. But we've got to be obedient. Yes, God is a merciful, loving God. And he's forgiven. He said he'll throw the sins in the sea you know, it's far, you know, that you won't even have memory of. You still are carrying them, you know, but it's your heart. He said, David had a heart after God. Not like, oh, I could sin and God's going to forgive me. That ain't the right heart. We're not talking about that. God knows your heart and that's what he will judge your heart. You know, um, I had a, a coach that used to say, he's, he's really meant it. Look, he's crying. You know, sometimes the tears can show that you're faking, but they also show 
a really merciful heart, like a forgiveness of the heart, real tears, not faking, okay? So we're talking about realness here. Um, and God knows. God will judge that. He will know. So we're not trying to say play with this. It's just being really obedient, having a heart after God to want to do right. You know, when you're being disobedient, you're living and fulfilling the desires of your flesh. You know, your flesh wants things that bring you away from God. The people that you choose to be with, the 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 desires that you're having. When you look at it, look at it. Take a minute, stop, look at them. Are they bringing me closer to God or pulling me away from God? When you're getting high, are you getting close to God or away from God? Some supernatural um, worldly trip. Or are you coming closer to the things of God? You got to really look at that and, and see um, what you're doing in life. I mean, across the board. Is it bringing you closer to God? You making millions. Is it bringing you closer to God? Are you doing things for God with it? Are you helping others? Are you building a kingdom? Are you giving tithes and offering to someone who can, who's building the kingdom? I'm talking about these churches that are not doing anything but filling their own pockets. We're not talking about that. Okay, so in the word, when God talks about obedience, he also says in 1 Samuel that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Your stubbornness is as idolatry. You know, you're idolizing this thing that is causing you to be disobedient. And God is a jealous God. He ain't going to have that. You're just not going to have anything before him. Okay, and that's point blank period. He is the creator of it all. You obey him. He says, I'll bless you. Bless are the obedient. So let's get lined up with God in that area. You know, some of you need to take a minute and, and repent for the things that you put in front of God, that you allow to go before God, that you want it so bad that you, you, forgot about God and you sought after it money, jobs, kids friends, relationships repent repent okay and get back with God in those areas the other thing I want to talk about is spending time with God <clears throat> you know you have on your calendar everything you want to do is there any time in there for God him being the one, I will always say, created it all, that has it all, has your blueprint. He created you. He knows exactly what you want and need. Okay? When you seek him, he should be there before any job because he, he can feed you better than any job can. He can give you the right job. He can put you in the right places with the right people. When it's God, it flows. You just know, yes, the enemy is going to be still trying to interfere and interrupt. But when you spend time with God, you see he gives you strategies to outwit the enemy, not him always in front of you, always ahead of you. You know, <clears throat> the Bible says in Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles um, 7.14, Pray and seek my face. Okay, it's like if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek his face, basically he's saying, I will heal you. I will give you the desires of your heart. Because also you got to realize when you're seeking God's face, the desires that he's giving you are his, is, is put in there from him. You're not desiring um, someone else's husband. You're not desiring someone else's house. You're not desiring things that um, God has not placed there. You will be on one accord with God. And a lot of times, they may be the same things that you desire, but it will be in a godly way. Your heart will be set in a, in a godly way. You know, God says... <clears throat> 
you know, the king has all this power, but his heart is in the hand of God and he could turn it the way he wants. So you will begin to have these strategies, you know, by seeking and spending time with God. He will let you know things, secrets that no one else knows. You know, with this, what what is happening here in this world and society, all that's going on, if you don't have an ear to hear God, you're lost. And that's what I see. My brothers and sisters are lost. And some of you is your fault, too, because you're not where you're supposed to be ministering and being that light in this dark place to others. Sometimes all they need is a word, a job, a door open, something. You know, but when we not when we're not lined up, it causes a lot of people to fall. By God's um, obedience, we're all saved. But by one man's sin, many are lost. So you don't want to be obedient, and you want to seek God. You want to hear God. You want to spend time with Him. When the um, when He walked this earth, He said, "Seek Me while I can be found," because He was with them, knowing that there's going to come a time they won't physically have Him. But He sent the Holy Spirit. He sent Him the Holy Spirit part of Him. So we don't physically, but we seek Him through the Holy Spirit for discernment, for wisdom. Okay. Um, in Isaiah seven thirty seven, with the Holy Spirit, Father says, "You know, you you won't thirst anymore. He'd give us a a a well of water where we won't thirst anymore. We'll have um." Out of, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. That's what some of you have. And you're supposed to share it. Your sisters and brothers, because we're not in our place, obedient and seeking the way we're supposed to be with God, spending time with God and being, hearing they're in prisons, they're in mental institutions, they're on the street begging, lost. They're even in churches lost, still being disobedient because they don't know who they are and whose they are. Hey, Jesus, ha tarabosh, Jesus, mm, Jesus, hey, Jesus, Father God, we just pray, you know, that those of you who are listening will get lined up that take this serious. You know, you were not born for nothing. You didn't come to know Christ to just sit at home and bake cookies or be on retirement and be like, oh, I'm good. Or just make millions. Do I? Nobody hears you. People need to hear you. People need to know what God has done. Okay, he said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw the men unto me. Okay, let God use you. Let him use you. Don't just sit on these gifts. Don't just sit on your blessings. Don't just sit on your wisdom, your knowledge. God will give you strategies. God will give you direction of how to how to go forth. Even if you get one, one family member, one brother, one sister, and you pull them out of the, the, the clutches and the hands of Satan, you've done a lot. Because that one can go get many. You know, I hear of so many testimonies of great evangelists that are saving thousands through the power of the Holy Spirit. And God, you know, so be that one. Because one would touch one, would touch one, and touch one. And you don't even know who you're touching, but you've got to speak. 
You got to share the wisdom, knowledge that God has given you. It's not just for you. So many of you I know personally have beautiful testimony. If I didn't get to just pull out of you and talk with you, I wouldn't even know. You know, not everybody's meant to be a minister in the church, but just in your past and whatever blessings God has given you, whatever job God has given you, it is for the purpose to let your light shine. Some of you got light, but it's it's not set up on the hill where people can see it. You know, don't have fear because your father will protect you. Okay, then, you know, um, then the last one is faith. Um, We can't do any of this without faith. Okay. Faith is what you use, first of all, to come to the come to the Lord, to believe a God that you can't see is real. That's a faith. He said, those that believe on me shall have everlasting life. He said, um, you believe in that he can wipe away your sins. Okay, he died on that cross that you may be saved. You're you're having faith in that. But it doesn't stop there, right? He says, um, you know, and then he you make him Lord and Savior of your life. You confess and you believe him to be that in your life. And if he's Lord and Savior of your life, you have succumbed under him and allowed him to be your Lord. A Lord is the director, the leader, the guider, the one in charge. Okay, so you have to surrender yourself to him and allow him to do that. Or you can miss him. All these things that you don't do, you could miss God. You could possibly miss God because it's like, why are you not doing this? You know, as we said, you you could be acting out of um, witchcraft. You could be um, hearing the wrong thing if you're not seeking God. You can be being led by Satan. You know, he speaks too. You know, you have these situations going on in your life and some of you are like, oh yeah, God bless me or you're going to bless me with that. And it could be Satan. You know, how many times <clears throat> do we think this is our husband? This is our job. This is our house. This is our car. And if it was, it would have last. It would not have been a mess. And, and two would have agreed. The other thing is faith. Right? We're talking about faith. We're talking about seeking God. We're talking about obedience. You cannot please God without faith. Right? The woman with the issue of blood. She said, if I could just touch the hem of your garment, I will be made whole. She had been to doctors, all different type of medical profession. Like some of you, witch doctor, you, you're believing in horoscopes. That's that's not of God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, maybe it's when you're in the world, these things line up. But when you become a Christian, whether they're lining up or not, you're born again. So now you supposed to line up with the word of God. That's it, period. You know, don't have a little dust under your hats and believing in God. You could miss him. Okay, you're living out your life by horoscope. You could miss God. Okay, um, and the only way you know if you're hearing the voice of God is by spending time with him. That's how you know. You have to spend time with him. And you, he said, my sheep know my voice. People go on YouTube all the time. How do I hear the voice of God? It is no real big secret. You have to spend time and something in your nowhere begins to let you know the difference. Okay. You have to seek him. You have to really spend time. Not, okay. I said that prayer. I did. Look. Lord, Lord, I I call on you, Father. I want you, Lord God. Talk to him with with his language, the word, his word, his promises. Talk to him. And don't always go asking. Just spend time with him. Let your heart get right with God. Okay? Have that faith. 
like the woman with the issue of blood. You will have that faith. She knew. She knew. Okay, even the satarian man, his servant was paralyzed. And he had the opportunity to, to meet with Jesus. He said, no, I am not even worthy of you to come to my house. If you just say the word, I know he will be healed. Jesus is army on present. He, he's everywhere. Holy Spirit, God, they're everywhere. They don't need to be there to lay hands all the time. You know, but when you hear God, you'll know. Is this a situation I need to lay hands? Do I need to go there? Can I just speak to that mountain from where I'm not, where I am? Because by faith, God said, if you speak to that mountain, it shall be moved. Do you have faith for that? Do you have faith for that? Faith is walking on the water like Peter did, right? Faith is being out in the ocean and the tide is keep pulling you out. But you know you're trying to get to shore. And, but you have faith. No matter what it's looking like, I'm getting to shore. Not for a week, you believe like that. Not for a month, not for a year, not for three, not for four. You believe until you can't believe anymore. It's God's timing. Everything is God's timing. Jesus is coming back. Generations have gone and said that. The signs are there. Okay? All the signs are there and they're becoming more and more. But you have faith. You die in faith. Okay? You have to have that made up mind no matter what it looks like. I'm going to believe until I can't believe no more. What else you going to do? Go fall and get beat up and go to hell by Satan? Walk in faith. Faith is that substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not of not seen. When you're in that ocean, it can you can well you'd be on the land. It looked like a tsunami is coming. The wall, but God says, stay right there. You better stay right there. And have that type of faith. Okay? You have faith to go on a roller coaster, man-made stuff. You have faith to bungee jump out the sky. You have faith to let an airplane take you up in the air. How many stories do you need to hear of God's goodness for you to have faith? You believe all this other stuff. My mother got COVID um, two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago. She was down. You know, we're calling hospitals and, you know, we didn't want to bring her there because, you know, people go in and sometimes they don't come out just depending on you got angels up in there looking out for your loved ones. You know, she's 84. The talk is, well, you know, doctors I talk to, well, you know, what type of life is she going to have? Like, basically, like, just let her go. Like, what? You know, it's all about God's time, and I'm going to be that good and faithful servant to the end, to my mother and anybody else God placed in my, in my path. And my mother was going through, down, like, wouldn't eat just sleeping, wouldn't walk anymore, wasn't talking. I said, you know what? I pray, but I need to really pray. I need to talk to my father a little bit more intensely. Sometimes it takes a little bit more, a little bit more fast, a little bit more praying. You know, you need to have a meeting. <laughs> Lord, I'm on your books for today. We're meeting and talking. And I spent some time with him. Okay. And it's not about, oh, I be COVID. She be COVID. It's only through the grace of God that we do any of this, you know, that any of this happens. It's not that you're so all that, okay? And God had to do that with Job and break him down, okay, through allowing the story to play out. Satan wants to prove this. God said, yeah, I'm going to show something too to Satan, I mean, to Job, okay? So my mother got back up. The next day she was sitting up and that's, just what God showed me, what I we talked about. And he showed me. She sat up on her bed, smiling, laughing, her feet dangling and, and swinging. She's eating and drinking now. Okay? But I pray and I continue to pray and I pray who's around my mother. You have to have that faith too. Okay? You have to just have that type of faith. And why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and you're walking in faith, that's up to God. 
we all going to die one day, whether it's from COVID or whatever. That's not the prize. How you go is where you going to go is the prize. So don't boast about anything because it's all God. Boast about how awesome God is. Wow. Look at what my father did. Wow. Hey, Jesus. Hallelujah to Yah. You know, so don't brag about what God does because it's not because of you. You know, when Job went through what he went through, he also saw that people around him didn't have the same faith. He's like, Lord, I do everything. What is going on? You know, but God gave him everything back and showed him. Remember, Job, it wasn't because of you that I do. I do this because of my grace and mercy. You are still not worthy. You're still as filthy rags in a way. But God takes joy in us. We are not even a pinky of um, goodness. When he looks down and he's blessed, he sees him. He sees that spirit that he put in us. But we still got this flesh. Okay, and the flesh is a lot of things that are not God. But that's why when we live eternity with God, we're going to be out of this fleshly body. You know, but God replaced everything to Job by his faith. And that's a lot of you. You, you, God can bless you, but you still going to have your grave clothes on. You still looking back at what God brought you from sometime. Some of you by faith need to get out of these sorry marriages, these sorry friends, these sorry jobs, these sorry situations and step out on faith. Yes, that job can bring you a lot of money. <clears throat> but you know what? Whether God brings you a lot or not, your soul, your eternity is worth more than your little time here with all of that and you building up um, generational wealth. When God comes back, all that ain't going to even matter. My country accent comes out sometime. All that ain't even going to matter. It won't even matter. It won't. It will not matter. I'm a northern and a southern girl. <laughs> but anywho, <laughs> it will not matter. You know, it really will not. So does God allow these things? Sure. Get your wealth, get your money. But you better know who's first. And if you can get that after your day that you spent and gave God some time and did what he wanted you to do and sought after him, you know, hallelujah. I have calls. I have clients to be making and doing. And I know who's first in my life. All of that. And it's by faith that I'm like, it's going to be okay. If I show you my phone, it's probably 11 texts or calls that I put on silent and probably missing. If I never, ever do anything great for the world, it doesn't matter as long as I do what is right for God. Okay. You know, faith is, is, um, Matthew 8, 8, only speak the word. Right, he spoke the word to the satyrian and he believed. First, Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we must walk by faith. You know, you, every day, you're living by faith. What you're doing for Christ should be by faith. Okay, Hebrews um, 11, 1, which we spoke about. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't see it. But you walking and believing God got it. How many of you are waiting to see? Go buy the suit for where you know God's going to bring you. Okay? And like I said, we, like Fred Price, we're not talking about, um, we're supposed to operate in faith, not um, foolishness or presumptuous. Faith, um, Fred Price the late Fred Price, may he rest in peace, has a book, Faith, Foolish, or Presumptuous. I remember reading that book. It was during that faith flow time um, in the 80s. Everybody laying hands on your car, your man, your house, oiling up stuff. That faith, oh, we need this faith, faith, faith. And wondering why things wasn't happening. One, they wasn't spending time with God. 
to know, is that where I'm supposed to lay my faith? Am I supposed to have faith in that, Lord? You know, it gets to be that personal with him. You know, God is not going to say, have faith for another woman, another man, another spouse. That's, all, you know, with someone or someone's house. They're happily, could be a Christian family in. Folks were going around laying hands on that. This is my house. I'm wondering, why am I not getting that? You can't just like go pull things out. I got faith. I got faith. You got to be lined up with God to have faith in what he's saying have faith in. Can you ask for something? Yes. He said, if Satan does things for his children, what more won't he do for his if they ask? This is for his children, not for stepchildren or, or people that come by the house sometime and they want ass of your father. It's his children that sit at the table. These blessings are for God's children. Those that have confessed, believe, and are under the, the king. And you get the benefits of the kingdom. And there's so many benefits. Oh my good Lord Jesus. You're like, why haven't I done these things before? Instead of being out here lost and confused, not knowing the signs of the time or whatever's going on, who's your husband, who isn't your husband, what job, what job you shouldn't have, you know, and and being obedient to it all. Trust and believe. God has it all and is way better than anything else in any other way that we would go. I love you all. Have a blessed day. Obedience, time with God, and have faith. Oh, right. I was going to tell you, right. So basically, the last thing I was going to share with you is just how God um, showed me something in my life. And this is very um, dear to me to share um, because it was very... Okay, so basically, my desire to do what I saw with my mother was married to my dad. I grew up seeing a mother being married. I'm not saying it was perfect. I'm not. It wasn't. But what I saw and internalized was marriage. My mother was a woman. I'm going to idolize, take after my mom, want to be like your mother <clears throat> and you marry your dad, which I did um, more than a more than a couple, I've been married because I sought after that. God is a forgiving God. So I'm not under any bondage, any curse. I repented. I deal with the consequences of my mistake and lack of knowledge. That's how his people perish. But I thank God that he's given me a second chance to live and and seek obedience, um, forgiveness for um, my desires. I desired more. My desires were stronger for what I wanted than my desire for God. Okay. So that is the moral to my story in my part that you have to, your desire for God has to be stronger than your own desires. Hopefully, maybe as you spend time with God, you might say, ooh, that one lines up. That is still God's desire. That one was for God, from God for me to have. But some of you, you're going to hold on to your desires to death. And when you get to them, God will be like, that wasn't, you know what I have for you was right over here. Right over here. You're under bondage for some of these things that, oh, I got three kids. I'm supposed to stay. Or this is my sister. I have to be with her. Or that's my brother or my dog, my cat, my son. You know, <clears throat> you have to be obedient and desire God more than some of the things that seem to be good. How could being married be a bad thing? But what's bad is when you desire it so much that you end up in situations that were not God. You end up doing things and spending time, money, and effort in areas that are not God. You desire these businesses or this job or things that are not God. So 
Let your desire for God be greater than your desire that you have for your for your own needs and wants, your own desires. Let your desire be for God first, foremost, greater than any other desire. Okay? Love you. Have a blessed day.